Um, and this is super exciting because I have an opportunity tonight to interview someone that I've been wanting to pick her brain for a while. So now I get to pick her brain publicly for you, my friends on Facebook. So I want to introduce you to a friend and colleague, JJ. Now I am not going to try to even pronounce your last name and just mess it up. So I'm just going to completely introduce you as the awesome, am amazing, sexy boss, JJ. Thanks, Heather. You're welcome. <laughs> and thanks for having me and welcome everybody. Yeah, super exciting. So I want to kind of set the stage of who JJ is. So who she is is an empowerment strategist and the host of several podcast shows, including Fit to Love, Spirit, Purpose, and Energy. She is the director of Invisible Fitness and Amazon best-selling author of Fit to Love, How to Get Physically emotionally and spiritually fit to attract the love of your life an author of knack absolute abs routines for a fit and firm core she was named best personal trainer in los angeles 2007 by elite traveler magazine and jj has been featured in many national magazines including shape fitness muscle and fitness and hers elegant bride women's health she's been on nbc cbs fox news and CW, I mean, so much more. And her newest book, The Invisible Fitness Formula, Five Secrets to Release Weight and End Body Shame, debuted at number two on the Amazon bestseller list for women's health and number two as a new, hot new release on May 18, 2007. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Heather. So first of all, I think it's super amazing that you were number one trainer in Los Angeles. I kind of have it that Los Angeles out of all the cities in the United States is like the most egocentric city. So to be top trainer in LA is pretty hot. Yeah, it was a shock to me. And it was from Elite Traveler Magazine, which is a very high profile, very private luxury, luxury magazine. And, yeah. uh, and trust me, it was a shock to me too. So when I saw that, I was like, what does it say? And I have like 10 copies in the other room okay. uh, of the magazine that I still have. So that was fun. So I have to ask a fun question. Can you share a top, um, I don't know, celebrity that you've ever had a client as a client? I have signed many an NDA. Uh, so I can tell you some things about her. Uh, she was one of the original hosts on The Biggest Loser and um, what else? And she replaced a very high profile talk show host on a talk show years ago. Um, so anyway, but I did sign an NDA and, and I don't work with her anymore, but there have been celebrities that kind of come and go. And quite honestly, there's a lot of celebrities that are a big pain in the butt uh, because of things like that. Like there's this idea that because I'm famous, you should just, you should just be a pleasure. In fact, I almost fired one once. Um, I love him and I still love him. Uh, but he was doing things that made me realize he wasn't listening to me. And I said, look, and I called him, I said, I love you. I think you're great. But because I know that you did these things that, that challenge your joints and are going to potentially injure you, it lets me know that you're not listening to me. And I go, and that's okay. You don't have to listen to me. If you don't think I'm smart, if you don't think I know what I'm doing, then maybe I'm not the right trainer for you. No hard feelings. And now he called me back like, no, 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 no. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I'll stop doing that. I was like, I'm like, look, dude, like I, your shit stinks too. Like I can't, I'm sorry if I can't swear on Facebook, but, um, but it's how it is. And I'm not your person and I'm a person and I love you, but either you trust me or you don't. If you don't trust me, that's an issue. So, um, yeah. So it's, you're going to do that with a lot of, a lot of clients. I completely get that. So I want to talk about something that's personal, I think for all people and women and men, it is everyone of what weighs us down. And I love the kind of play on language here because we're not talking about weight. No, we're not we're talking about weight. Right. We're talking about something really more emotional perception. And I'm just going to name a few. So you gave me a list. I'm just going to name a couple and then we're going to kind of maybe go down that road a little bit so people can like relate to that, you know, go, Oh, that works for me. Yeah. I completely see how that might weigh me down. So let's start with some basics. So one of them is emotional eating. Okay. Like we got that one, go down that road. I mean, that's, that's one. One is family drama. <laughs> one is mother issues. All right. I, I get that one. Uh, fear of becoming your parents, divorce, loss, illness, depression. This is a good one. Empty nest syndrome, 
Um, deep sense of lack of self purpose. Ooh, good one. Hiding behind your kids. So these are a couple, we kind of go on and on giving you a couple. Can you just kind of talk to that in your experience as a, as a coach, as a trainer, how yeah. these things weigh people down? So when I was thinking about this event and how I wanted to help people on the next level and the book that I just wrote and how that all ties together, you know, one of the things that get in people's way is that they don't realize that a lot of the issues that stand in their way are things that they don't think about on a daily basis. And it's that emotional um, inherited emotional DNA. It's the habits and patterns, it's subconscious beliefs. It's the fears that we hold on to that carry around with us that we're not even present with because we don't know how they show up in our daily lives, but they create barriers and blocks to relationships, to success, and definitely to health. A lot of clients that I've worked with over the years who have emotional eating issues or can't seem to release the weight permanently Everybody wants to look at, and this is how I'm different as a trainer, everyone wants to look at, oh, well, what diet are you doing and how much exercise are you doing? And while those are important, I'm not saying they're not important, they're not going to produce lasting change if you don't go to the root of why you do any of it in the first place. It's not what you eat, it's why you eat. Mm -hmm. And everyone wants to look at, well, what am I eating? And I got to change what I'm eating. Forget the what right now, what's the why? And what's the why and what's the barrier to really making lasting change? And it comes down to these emotional issues and they happen, they show up in all parts of our lives, whether you be, you, you get in the same fight that you get in with every boyfriend or girlfriend or partner or husband or wife, or how many times you've been married or with your business, when you come up against something that you sabotage yourself or you get sick every time. And so when it, in terms of helping people in a, in a weight loss fitness health kind of way, as well as in a life coaching kind of way. I've got a lot of people who've called me and become clients based on relationship issues because of who they're attracting and what's showing up and how they see patterns happening and how they understand or are starting to understand based on some of the work I do in the podcast, that that's stuff that they have carried with them that is not serving them. And so the question becomes, how do I really release that? How do I get rid of that? How do I overcome that? Because until you do, you're going to stay in the same cycle. That's why every year we have New Year's resolutions because everybody goes on a diet mm -hmm. and I'm all against the diet mentality because diet indicates temporary. If I ask you, not, not to me, if I say, what's your diet? That means, what do you eat? So if you ask me what my diet is, I'll tell you, but most people say, I'm going on a diet. No, I don't want you to go on it. You already have a diet. It's what you eat every day. What I want you to do is change what you eat every day, potentially, to help get you to closer to your goals. But that lifestyle change has to be embedded a lot deeper than willpower. And mm -hmm. in this season of weight loss, releasing weight, emotional eating, everyone thinks it's willpower. I have to force myself to exercise, to force myself to eat certain things. And, and when I sort of like get tired, oh, I'm tired of doing this, then I'm going to eat whatever I really want. And what I want to impress upon people is that when you do the deeper work, you get to the place where you want the healthier things. It's not about feeling restricted ever. I am not restricted yet. If you understood, if you knew what I ate, you'd be like, Oh my God, what do you eat? What's left? And I'll tell you anything that I want, I learn how to make it or have it in the way that is better for me. That still tastes great. I feel not restricted at all, but people say, well, don't you miss this? Not at all. That's where I want to get people to with both food as well as habits, be mm -hmm. able to rise above the drama, be able to rise above and heal the issues that trigger you because until you do, you cannot outrun your pain and you're going to keep bumping up against limitations in your business and your personal life and in your health and in your weight when you aren't willing to look underneath the hood and let's start changing the engine. Changing the engine. Absolutely. So part of this conversation we're having tonight is about I'm starting to help, help, help people identify what are the things that are holding them back or what you call, you know, holding them down or weighting them down. Those are just words we're using, right? So in the world of that, we're starting to identify that, and then we're going to discuss how you can actually release that, or how can you um, alter that, or, if, you know, I hate the words fix, but fix that. Release. And then my next thing is, what can we, you know, what's the result that's going to be mm -hmm. once those get released, right? So going down the path of some more, like father issues, mother issues, this one, by the way, I have to ask. Uh, that I think is really interesting. You must have a story behind this one. Hiding behind your kids. How is that something weighing a person down? How does that affect them? So if you have children, let's say you grew up in a very restrictive household. You never really felt like you had a voice. Or you didn't feel like you really could do the things you wanted to do because maybe your parents didn't approve of you. Right. Well, now you have your children 
And a lot of people believe, especially women, maybe not men, um, that if I birth you, you will always love me and you will always adore me and you'll always do what I say and you'll always be there for me. So that's like the, the pressure that gets put upon children because of parents' unfulfilled desires and needs that aren't being met by themselves really push children away. And so if you're the person who thought, well, maybe I don't have a partner, so I'm going to have children uh, by myself, or I can't wait to have children. So so I've heard this from people. I can't wait to have children. So someone will always love me. The pressure that that child is going to feel if they haven't already, at some point, their need for autonomy might be so great that they don't love, that they might love you, but they may not want to see you anymore because the pressure is too big. So hiding behind your kids can show up in ways where you didn't get to fulfill a certain desire or dream of yours. You're going to try to push your kids into it Mm -hmm. and you're living your life through them, which isn't fair to them because it's not their life. And again, that's what's going to cause over time, a child to pull away from a parent just on a respect issue because a child's going to inherently know what are you doing? Like, it's not your, it's not my job to make you feel better. It's your job to make you feel better. And why are you making me do this thing? I don't want to do, or why are you so attached to my success in this way? So I think if we're, if we're really being honest with ourselves and, and we're, and we're not, and we're saying, who am I outside of being a parent or who am I outside of being a wife or who am I outside of being a daughter? You are a person who's got gifts and skills and talents and a purpose. And it doesn't have to be a defined purpose today that my whole life's about this one purpose. It could be from year to year, your purpose could change. You could find a new purpose. But the point is you as an individual have a path, you have a journey and you were here to fulfill that. And along the way, you also have relationships, but you are not just a mother. And your purpose wasn't to be just a mother. It might have been to be a mother to your children and to grow to be your, to your children. But there's, there's something bigger than just your one child or your two children or your six children. Uh, and I think when we aren't honest with that, what we come up against is very needy parents, very controlling parents, and children that do drugs and become numb because they don't want to deal with their parents, uh, the intense emotions and, and, and pressure they feel from their parents. Right. Oh my God. That's a, that's a pretty deep one. <laughs> that's, a, that's pretty deep. I can relate to that on many levels. Uh, I think we all can either having with a parent ourselves like that, or, you know, something we maybe projected onto to kids and, and whatnot, uh, relationships in general. So another one that I thought was really interesting, um, of course, is one's retirement, uh, stress reduction, uh, divorce. We, you know, we knew this one very well, but fear of becoming your parents. I mean, how does that weigh one down? How, how, I mean, how does that weigh a person down? And then I'm going to move into like, how can someone, now that we've kind of talked about the pain here, how can someone actually shift this? So some people want to overcompensate by making, by they watch themselves closely and think about their parent and what their parent did or didn't do. And they do the exact opposite. But what you don't, what they don't realize is that sometimes, even though you may be in, in the action doing something different than your parents did, you still have their energy. So there's something about that scarcity or um, fear-based energy or overwhelm or anxiety. There's something you're still carrying forward, even though, you know, ad- ad- I'm going to talk about addiction energy for a second because we all have addictions. And that's one of the secrets in my book and in this process. And I know for a lot of you, if you don't do drugs or you don't drink too much or you don't identify yourself as being an addict, because that's mostly when we think of smokers or alcoholics or someone that has a substance abuse, but we all have addictions. And one of the most popular addictions is food. And the second most popular addiction is control. And, and if we're thinking about like, what gets, what stops you from feeling, what stops you from moving forward? Um, you can stop a behavior. A lot of people do. They, in fact, a lot of people stop smoking and start eating. And then they want, and people want to say, oh, it's an oral fixation. No, it's not an oral fixation. It's, it's not an oral fixation. It's because their addiction energy is still in your body. And just quitting the habit did not, because what happens is we do these things to push down our feelings and our emotions that want to come up and be expressed or, or processed or utilized in some way. They're information, but we're like, no, 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 I can't feel that. It's too uncomfortable. So I'm either going to smoke to push it down. I'm going to drink to push it down. I'm going to eat to push it down, but they're all pushing it down. And unless, so giving up the habit, like I have a client that I've told him, because he said from the beginning, I want to stop smoking. He was an alcoholic. He's an AA. And he said, I want to stop smoking next. I said, well, don't do it until you're really ready to deal with the feelings underneath because you still have a crutch of numbing. 
and until you're ready to be fully present. And it's going to be painful at first until you figure out what it is. Um, you know, keep smoking, don't stop because you're just going to take on some new numbing way. So the fear of not of becoming your parents is this idea that might, you know, it's that disassociation with the parents that there was something really, really wrong. And, and maybe there was, but there, this isn't coming from a place of healing and compassion. It's coming from a fear-based place where then you're going to take that same energy, which is in you. You can't run from it. It's in you. And you're going to use different actions, but you're still going to put the same energy either on your children or live it out in your life. So, so to me, healing, true healing is when you're different in the same situation. When you aren't triggered anymore, when you can look at something that used to bother you with compassion, when you can be with people that used to trigger you with you, you with compassion, when you can stand centered and calm in your power, feel satisfied and be an observer and not get triggered by all the same things that used to trigger you. When you have that kind of healing, now you can make conscious choices. But when you're in constant fight or flight mode because you've been triggered emotionally or because you're trying to run from this or run from that or stuff the emotions down or, oh my God, I'm so, I can't feel this. It's so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to stay in this pattern. So, you know, people that have anxiety, anxiety is actually not even a feeling. Anxiety is a sensation. Anxiety is a sensation that something wants to come through. <laughs> there is something needing to be expressed or processed that is, it's causing like an overload in your system. So again, that's what anxiety, people want to just numb it, smoke it away, put drugs in like, cause oh my God. Right. So, but anxiety yeah. really isn't a feeling you can consider it worry, but anxiety is a sensation. And so, but people will be, will be very quick to say, well, I have anxiety. We have anxiety for a reason. There's something going on that needs to be figured out and worked out some kind of new level that you're being asked to grow to. And then, and if you keep wanting to stay the same, when you, we're, we're constantly evolving and expanding. And if you try to slow down that boulder down the hill, you're going to get crushed. But in the case of our emotions, we just keep numbing. And then we don't sleep. And then we've got pain in our bodies and disease. And, uh, ah! yeah. and they wonder why they're overweight. <laughs> right. And for a lot of people, yeah, some of, the, some of the symptoms are that you're an emotional eater and you can't release the weight. You've tried weight loss programs, but the reason right. why you're not sticking is because you're not looking under the hood. You're still just dealing with the top level stuff Trust me, that's not where it's at. When you deal with the bottom level stuff, you heal some of that. And then guess what? You don't have a need to emotionally eat because you're comfortable. You figure out what your needs are. You know how to get them met. There's a deeper calm and mindfulness and consciousness and peace that you yeah. want so badly, but you're not going to get there by trying to control what you eat and log your exercise. <laughs> right. And log, log your exercise. Um, so there's a couple of things that I heard you say, and definitely I, it was an earlier talk about what's your diet versus I'm going on a diet. Like there's that some friends of mine right now are going on, on, on the keto diet, you know, so, and they're going on a bit and off it and whatever they're doing. So I think it's interesting. Um, and specifically the people that I know they're doing that, uh, have, I mean, I've known them for 15 years or 10 years and they've gone up and down, up and down on weight you know, because mainly they're not dealing with the other issues that are weighing them down. And a lot of those are emotional and the people I'm talking about are men. So, um, you know, they probably, for whatever reason, they don't want to deal with like what's underneath all of that. Right. And I, I always have the same, um, when I, over the years of my life, I've, I've kind of taken on as much as I possibly can, a minimalistic view of furniture and stuff. So I'm constantly releasing and letting go. And I have a saying, every time that I throw something away or give it away or release it out of my house, I lose weight. You know, it's just like something I do. And uh, it's true though. I mean, there's so many times that if I have something, I'll look at it and I'll say, does this spark joy or something? No or yes. And I'm like, I release it back. And I also just release energy off my body. You know, I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but it works. Like it just works, you know? Yeah, not at all. This is not cheesy at all. So, and I had this, you know, part of that is like, I have, when there's what I call equipment or, uh, you know, a blender, whatever the thing is, if it's not working, like it's broken, I get rid of it. I get it out of my space. I know that's the representation we're talking about because it's like a equipment, but yeah. it's the same thing inside. Like if something's yeah. not working, you got to get to it so you can let it go. Cause if not, it's just kind of killing the energy and nothing having nothing bad about having a blender sitting there. It can't work. Like what's the point? Just sucking up energy, you know? So I think that's the kind of stuff we're talking about. And it always, it, it, it helps the health. You know, it, it, it always comes back to health and well being, and 
weight is part of well-being. So I think if I was like summing up a little bit what JJ is saying to everybody is like, there's all these things that weigh us down. And then like that, once we figure that out and release those, our wellness and life, our vitality can go up. So let's talk a little bit about the, how to get through overcome and process. And be, right before you get into that, I kind of want to let everyone know why we're here tonight. And why we're here tonight is JJ is having an event in LA. And this event is amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the URL right now so you can go check it out. But the event is in January, perfect timing. And it's all about releasing and letting go and having health and well-being and vitality. And it's in LA, guys, it's LA. So like, it's great. So go check out the URL. It's heatherhavenwood.com forward slash JJ. That's easy, right? So it's heatherhavenwood.com forward slash JJ. Go, go check that out and keep Facebook on, keep listening to the video. So JJ, let's talk about how can people overcome? How can they do this? What's the process? Mm. <clears throat> well, when it comes to, uh, there's going to be mind, body, and soul Great. exercises. Okay. For some people, um, one of the things that sabotages them is their, in their inability to focus. And I don't mean focus like on something else, but to focus like within. I, I see a lot of people, again, we'll talk about the anxiety conversation where people are constantly moving. They can't keep eye contact with you for a long period of time. They look away, they're flittering because their brain's moving, right? They can't sit still. They laugh to defer, like, you know, they're always laughing because they're uncomfortable and they can't just be. So there's going to be practices of Zen meditations and using NLP to get into your body and to connect your body. Part of it is that we're not even connected to our bodies. And people are like, what do you mean I'm not connected to my body? Trust me, you're not connected to your body. Um, <clears throat> most of us are connected like from here up, right? Because your body's always giving you signs and symptoms and messages. So there's gonna be things in, in a mind, in, an, in a spirituality kind of way. So there's gonna be meditative practices to get you connected, to get you connected to your muscles, to get you connected to all parts of you so that you you, you can feel and understand what's going on at a new level because I tr trust me, I promise your body's trying to tell you something and you keep ignoring it. So that's part of it. Then there's the, the body stuff, the exercise, the food stuff. So we're going to talk about chakras and, and how food can actually heal different chakras in your body that are blocked with some of these emotions. So how we eat and how that helps, helps us. And when it comes to the emotional piece, I got a lot of fun stuff. So for couples, um, I'm actually going to start deeming this partly a couples workshop. Not There aren't a lot of couples signed up yet, but there will be by the end of the week uh, because I've got a lot of clients who are couples or clients whose significant other, they're having issues. And, and, and what I want to impress upon people about this event in particular, it's a workshop. It's not a lecture, which means you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be literally active doing something every day, all day long. Um, it doesn't mean you're not going to listen and absorb a concept, but it's not where you get to check out and check your phone. In fact, I probably might even take a phone privilege away and say no phones until the breaks because I don't want you disconnected. I don't want electromagnetic frequencies fighting for your attention and your energy. I want you actually to sit still. And if that means an emotion comes up that needs to be expressed, let it out. It's the reason why you keep overeating is because you don't want to feel uncomfortable. So this is going to be a very safe container of people who are on the same path as you dealing with some of the same issues. So when it comes to emotions, I got some great tools. Some of the tools come from nonviolent communication. We are going to identify, process, and release. We first have to identify it. So there's a couple other tools I'm going to be using, like communication. We're going to look at some forgiveness work. And we're going to take these things and we're going to go within and figure out what's blocking you. We're going to see if you act as a victim or a rescuer or a persecutor. We're going to figure out on the victim triangle what your starting gate position is and how you interact with others. And what are you trying to get in your life that you don't even know about? I did a, an exercise not too long ago in Imago therapy where it was, I mean, and trust me, I've done so much work that when something sticks out as a game changer for me, I'm like, Oh yeah, I got to share this with other people because if I'm unaware of it, Holy crap, people are unaware of it. But it was one of those, like I got to the end of the exercise and I was like, Oh, oh my God, this makes sense of why. I'm oh my God, what is it? Cause it sounds awesome. 
It's an imago therapy exercise. And it's about childhood. Anyway, I don't want to ruin it for everybody. Okay. Okay. It's going to be at the event. It's going to be at the event. It's a process at the event. We're going to do at the event. And when I, when I did it, I wondered why isn't everybody doing this exercise just by themselves? Every person alive would be getting benefit from doing this exercise. It would literally explain your dramas in your life. It would explain why you've attracted the friends and relationships that have ended and why they ended and what you wanted for them and what your patterns are. Anyway, and some powerful stuff. We're going we're gonna to dive a little deeper. And here's what I want to say about, because I've got clients who have listened to me for nine years and, uh, and a couple that is coming to the event. And she said to me, and she's a former therapist. She's like, she's like, you're wonderful. And I'm having resistance because I just wonder and she's like, I know, is it really going to be something new that you haven't already said? And, and she said it as I was walking out the door and I thought about it and it was a great thing to say for, to me because I realized the diagnosing of the problem is different than the treatment of the problem, right? Yeah. Someone telling you, you have cancer, you know, oh, okay, great. Yeah. Just knowing I have cancer means I'm gonna, that's going to fix it. That's just going to fix it right away. No, no, that's not how it works. So when you, first we have to uncover what it is. Right. And how many times in your daily life do you take time out to uncover why you behave the way you behave and why you feel the way you feel? Not never, <laughs> maybe once in a while, maybe once a week, once every two weeks if you go to therapy. But really, when do you create time and space to work on you? Because let me tell you, working on you is an investment in your business and in your relationship. Forget like if you think, oh, I don't have any weight issues. Okay, you don't need to have any weight issues. Maybe you have relationship in your relationship or maybe you're not really that happy. Or maybe your business doesn't feel so good to you. When do you take that time out to really give space to uncovering? And then the next step is processing, letting it go, figuring it out, problem solving it, understanding it on a different level. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're going to be doing at the event and it's going to be super fun because what I'm giving you is your power back and what you're going to find is your power back for all the people that feel like trapped, trapped in their marriage, trapped in their business, trapped in their relationship, trapped by their circumstances. You feel like a victim. I promise you will feel empowered to know exactly what that is and how to let it go and what, and why it's been holding you down. I love that. Take my power back. Okay. So if you're just turning in, I just want to say what we're talking about here. We're talking about this amazing event and where I'm going to actually ask you about who's going to be there. But this event is in January, the beginning of the year, the best time to talk about your health and well-being and your entire vitality for the future of 2018 is the timing's amazing. It is a beautiful ally with some amazing speakers and it's a workshop. You're going to be doing work. It's not passive. It is working on your life. Three days. It's in January. Okay, and here's the here's the URL. Ready? It's heatherhavenwood.com forward slash JJ. That's heatherhavenwood.com forward slash JJ. Now, here's a gift because JJ's amazing. She's gifting you 15% off off the, the live ticket version. Okay, she does have a virtual version. If you're like, I can't get to LA for whatever reason, I say go to LA. But she does have a virtual ticket purchase price with the 15% off. And here's the code. Ready? Write this down. One, five, off. There it is. All capitals. All capitals. All caps. All one, caps. five, O-F-F. -F, all caps. 15% off of the live version in LA. And she wants you there. And it's limited. She's got a room. It's X big. And as soon as it gets hits, she's like closing it. You know, it's not one of these things like, oh, we'll just get a bigger room. No, no, no. It's a workshop. You're working on your life. It's in January, the beginning of the year, 2018. Make 18, 2018 the best year ever and really create from a place of wellness and vitality. All right. So January, again, the URL is heatherhavenwood.com forward slash JJ. All right. So who's going to be there? You mean my other speakers or? Yeah, other speakers. So first we've got Jeannie Peters. She's a registered dietitian and the, and the nutrition director of the Nourishing Wellness Medical Center. Cool. And she's a dear friend and the number one interviewed person on my podcast, both video and audio. And, and Jeannie's going to be presenting about chakras. 
She's going to talk about the energy of food and how the energy of food can heal the energy in your body. Now, Jeannie is an expert in many areas, including hormones and just diet in general. So if you want to know about keto, you want to know about paleo, you want to know about whatever, Jeannie can help you. Uh, foods for any kind of diseases. She is in, she is amazing when it comes to nutrition and she's like an earth mama. Um, Jeannie's hands are always dirty because her hands are in the dirt. She's always growing things and working with herbs and she's the most natural down to earth a uh, big hearted person. And if you want to know anything about Jeannie, you can go to nourishingwellness.com. You can check her out on my podcast. She's been on a million times and she's a wealth of knowledge and she's a love. She's just a big heart open love. And um, anyway, so, but Jeannie, you will, you'll love what she gives to you and you'll want more from her. I promise. Um, next we've got Lisa Thomas and Lisa Thomas mm -hmm. is a energy worker, energy healer, and she helps to clear inherited emotional DNA. So you're probably thinking, okay, well, Maybe you understand or you can like get that concept. But like I said, whether when we're talking about the parents, you have energy that's been passed down for you through generations, not just your parents, but before your parents. I, I've been to Lisa privately a few times and I know people and Jeannie's been to her um, and, and I send many clients to Lisa. And one of the things that usually comes up is people are amazed that it goes back like six or nine generations where something like scarcity is in your energy stream. Now, Lisa is, she's a healer. And how she does it, she can honestly tell you she doesn't know. I mean, in terms of how she can do what she does. And I've had her on my podcast mm -hmm. twice to explain her story and, and how she can help people and what she does. But Lisa is amazing. I will tell you that when I went to see her, and you can have sessions with her actually virtually on Skype as well is live. And Lisa's doing something at my event that she doesn't do. She's doing a miniature live healing at, in the room. So she's going to take the collective energy of who's in the room. After we've done some of this processing, we're going to pick out the top things and she's going to clear the room of these energies. And let me tell you, Lisa's not cheap and she has like a two month waiting list because she's amazing. So you're going to get a taste of something that otherwise would cost you about the same price of the whole ticket uh, to have a session. And, and there's, again, there's going to be a momentum that's created in, in the event of you releasing as we go. So imagine the readiness of your energy system by the time we get to the clearing that Lisa's going to do. So she's going to explain inherited emotional DNA. And this is like top level stuff. Like she describes it like if you're uh, in the peanuts, you know, the, is it um, Linus that's got the dust cloud? Well, she's clearing the dust cloud, okay? And she's clearing the stuff that you can't consciously do, that you need some help. And people are so transformed. I took my parents to see her, and one of the clients came up from Orange County and said, how do you know her? And she said, well, I, I've only, I'm only meeting her today for the first time. I've worked with her once on the phone, but my friend, who I, at, who I knew for a long time, but I started, like, not to like anymore, came back and was a different person after working with Lisa. She's like, I liked her. She was different. So there is very palpable changes in people when you can release some of this unwanted energy. So that's Lisa and she's amazing. Um, we have Michael Neely. Michael Neely is going to be at the event. He's another fellow podcaster and Michael's going to be doing all the Zen meditation, NLP kind of work to help us reprogram and to, he's got a presentation called 10 steps to Zen, like instantaneous things that you can do energetically to get yourself into calm, which who can't use that, right? So we're going to be doing meditations and NLP work with Michael. And then we've got Allison Melody. Allison is the host of the Food Heals podcast. And Allison's also going to be dealing with food and energy and a little bit of that kind of emotional energy and some meditations and sort of her life story and how that, how food and disease transformed her life and what she's learned and how she's overcome that and what she does now to help others. So it's that, it's kind of going to marry that inspiration of and the education, because she's got a lot of education from all of her guests as well. So Allison's going to be at the event. And of course, there's me. And I'm going to, of course, going to be bringing the exercise piece. I'm going to actually deal with astrology. And you might be thinking, why would you deal with astrology? Well, for those of you that don't understand astrology, we've got four main elements in astrology, fire, water, earth, and air. And when you understand what your energy is made of astrologically, you start to make sense of and get validated in things that, oh, oh, that's just because I'm this and I'm that, or because I'm an Aries Venus. Oh my God, it makes so much sense now. Instead of what we do to ourselves is we put the pressure on us of being weird or I'm broken or there's something wrong with me. Why, why do I act this way? But when you understand some of these other energies that play into your habits and patterns like astrology, 
you're like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. And then ding, 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 ding. You get to figure out ways to work with it so that you're not bumping up against it and trying to change something that you inherently are. And that's so powerful as someone who's a Pisces with a lot of Sag, like super sensitive or used to be and get used to get like, oh, like feel a trigger. And I've totally healed that because I worked with it and I no longer get that punch in the gut. I don't feel offended. I don't get my feelings hurt anymore because I worked with the energies of who I am and how to transform that in combination with some of these other practices. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be talking about astrology. And of course, we're going to do the um, nonviolent communication work, the Imago work. I got a lot of fun tools and some forgiveness work because sometimes people don't even realize that they're beating themselves up and shaming themselves because they can't forgive themselves for something they did or something their parents told them they did. And you're just been carrying that for years. And if you can understand that, oh my God, I've been torturing myself and you can let that go and then you're free you're free to like like move on from that because it doesn't serve you you know what i love about this event first it's january 12th and 14th i love this event because there's so many different modalities coming into play we have a spiritual we have an astrology we have a body we have a chakras we have nutrition like there's so many different things that affect us every day. It's not just food. It's not just spiritual. It's not just these, our past. It's everything that's constantly affecting everything we do with our relationships, with our personal finances, with our health and well being. There's all these pieces that affect us, and they're kind of what I call some of them are intangible. You know, it's not like a, you know, there's things or there's parts that are. But a lot of it is intangible conversations and intangible things about tapping into our chakras and understanding that and how the food actually affects that. I mean, that's, that's really revolutionary. And then going to another level with the healing. I mean, you really are tapping into all these modalities. I've never seen that before. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on and encourage people who are like, who get what we're talking about, who understand that they're ready to have a huge transformation on all areas of their life, not just health, not just spiritual, not just money, not, not just relationships. It's, it's like a whole encompassing of, and it's such great timing. So again, I'm going to tell you the URL. It's heatherhavenwood.com forward slash JJ. You get 15% off the live event in January in LA, in LA, in LA on January, January 12th, 13th, and 14th. And here again, one more time is the percentage off is 150FF, 150FF in all caps. Get 15% off off the live version in LA. She does have an option for guys who are not, who are virtual. So that's hugely an option, but like go, like that's, you know. Just go. That's what I would say. Um, okay, so now we've we've started to discover what are things that weigh us down that can cause issues in our spiritual and our vitality and our health and well being. We've discussed how are some different modalities that you're going to be bringing and discussing, and then all the different speakers that are bringing their own expertise. Right. This is kind of covering this whole basis. So now the next the next piece of all this, I think that people are asking is this sounds awesome, but what am I going to get? You know, like what's the result? Cause it sounds like there's a ton of work. Um, and a ton of, when I say work, by the way, I mean like it's going to be work on ourselves. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like work to me. That's just more about releasing, but they might be asking, okay, I come for two, three days. Here's the price plus airfare. What, what, what's the result that you can say that people are going to get out of this extraordinary event? Well, first of all, you're going to get clarity. You're going to get huge clarity on why you keep getting tripped up in different parts of your life. You're going to get tools to deal with the triggers when they come up. Tools that will help you get, like, come back down to neutral, like diffuse that trigger because a trigger is just, it's, it's a call to action for the, this response that you're having. And while there are more traumatic triggers out there, there's PTSD and things like that, there are, you're going to learn tools and how to, except in the 10 steps to Zen, come down from the trigger so that you can actually process in an observer state and get your needs met. So you're going to understand that process, which is going to give you clarity. It's going to give you freedom because you're not going to feel a victim 
to other people anymore. You're not going to feel like you're trying to, uh, like you're so uncomfortable that you don't know what to do because you're going to know what to do. You're going to feel calm and peace and a knowing that here's the path laid out for you. What I think is really unique and why I want to do this event and why I'm doing it in January and what I'm all about. And I've always been all about, you know, if I, I used to say, I used to joke and say, well, if I was that kind of person that just cared about the money, I would have invented a stupid ab roller uh, 20 years ago and been sitting on a beach uh, after I sold millions of dollars. But what I know about people is that I'm going to sell you a piece of equipment you're never going to use. I'm really invested in you actually doing the work, which is why yeah. with my book and you were talking about how they're, I wanted to show people, see that mind, body, soul logo. See, that's, that's what's missing. That's why every year you do the same yo-yo dieting and exercise program. It's why every year you repeat patterns that get you only so far and you come up against the wall because you're not, again, connecting the dots of integration. And without integration, you're not going to have lasting success. That's just it. And Because you, you have to be changing. You really want to be shedding layers of, of protection that you've had for so many years that you don't need anymore. It's really empowering. You're going to feel empowered. You're going to feel a new sense of between vitality and peace and calm a new sense of energy and purpose and understanding this and this trust in what it is that you know, you, all these tools that you have now that you know you can use at any time. Because there are some truths that maybe haven't been so clear, but once you do this process, all the processes, these truths are going to become very clear to you. And then, and so you're not going to be afraid of the trigger. You're going to be afraid of the trauma. You're not going to be afraid of the confrontation or when something's coming up. You're going to be afraid of the emotion that you're now starting to identify in your body. And instead of running to eat that thing or grab your technology or t zone out or lit up that cigarette or drink that drink or whatever, have pot, whatever, whatever you're doing, you're going to say, Whoa, maybe I don't need that. Now, if you want it, that's a different story. I'm not saying that we need to get rid of all these habits. If there's something you enjoy, you don't want to give up. It's the fact that that habit doesn't control you. So you're going to gain your control back. And so you're not giving up your power to these substances and these behaviors that are ruling your life. Mm -hmm. And I think that was interesting. The beginning of this call, the beginning of this Facebook live, we talked about that everyone has some kind of level of an addiction. It just depends on like where we're placing that addiction. And I think it's an interesting, and, and it, when we have that, it's just kind of pushing down all these emotions. So part of this workshop is kind of like uncovering all that and then giving you the tools and the strategies on how to deal with all these emotions that may or not come up in different modalities and meditation, food, chakras, astrology, understanding, processing. There's just like all these modalities. What I hear is you'll be coming away with this huge toolbox to like understand how to actually, you know, pick up the tool you need at the time in your life when things come at you, how to deal with that stress in such a way that's more powerful. Like you said, what I want to do with this event and give your power back. You want to give your people's power back with this event. And part of that is the workshop process and then giving you all these different tools, tools that you're not taught in school, tools that you might not be taught at home. Most likely you're not. So tools that are outside of conventional conversation, true tools that take you to another level of vitality and wellness. And that is truly, honestly, I've been in the event business since 2001 what is that, 16, 17 years, <laughs> a long time. And I've produced and been to hours of 450 events. Each event is three days. So take, do that math. And I've been to a lot of events. I'm a event snob. And so what I mean by an event snob is it's gotta be really damn good for me to even think about it. You know, it's gotta be like really good, you know? And this is really good. Like you just don't, this is, this is a once in a lifetime thing. I've never seen this in my 16 years of doing events. It's truly awesome. Thank you. And that's what I, and I want people to understand that because they think, oh, it's just another event or maybe it's not. talk to you. And it's, it's not. not, this is, this is why, one of the reasons why I chose this space uh, and limited the room so that we could actually have a really safe container for you yeah. to work. Because here's, you know, if, if, the reason why you don't get results with all these programs that you're doing is because you keep just repeating the same pattern yeah. and you don't give yourself the time and the space to identify process and release just in this, in the, you know, it's, I mean, if you go to therapy, 
often. If you've got a coach, yeah, maybe you do it once a week for an hour. But as I'm sure that you know, in a therapy session or coaching session, you hit upon a trigger at minute 45 and you got five minutes left before you have to leave. Right, you're like, oh, figure it out, process right. it out. <laughs> you start to get down to a deeper place and all of a sudden now you have to leave. You're with us. It's not a full three days. The event's going to start around three or four o'clock on Friday and go to about two o'clock on Sunday. All right. So we have a good amount of time, but it's, but it's enough time to build momentum and a momentum of depth. And you asked me, Heather, about what people are going to get from this event. And I yeah. gave you some feelings, but now let me give you another level. All right. Okay. So if you want to lose weight, you'll have the tools to be able to lose weight. You know why? Because now you're going to, if you can conquer emotional eating and you release that need for that addiction because you're processing your emotions and you're not starting to stuff them down, guess what? Yeah. You're not going to emotionally eat. <laughs> you're going to learn about inflammatory foods, you're eating anti-inflammatory foods. You're going to decrease your cravings. If you're in relationship and you get triggered by every little thing, you're going to understand that and understand how to heal that. So that way you can be calm and present and not take things personally and not go in screaming matches with people because you can understand how to shift your energy. So you can improve your relationships. You're going to improve your health. You can lose weight. You're going to have more energy and you're going to have your power back. And I know for some people that doesn't mean anything for some of you though, it's going to be pretty huge. Oh, huge. The other thing that I want to tap into that I think is a result or something that people aren't thinking about. Um, like I said, I've been in the business for 16 years and um, every single one of my dearest friends, minus like one, <laughs> I've met at events like this. You know, I've met at events. You know, the kind of people, the quality of the human beings you meet at, at most events are awesome. But the kind of quality of people that you're going to meet and this event is awesome. And I'm all about that right now. I'm really all, that's why I'm an event snob. It's like, I'm very protective of who I talk to and communicate and give my energy to and whose energy do I take and who do I surround myself. I'm very aware of that, you know? Um, and so this is an event that I want to go to not only for myself and to meet some amazing people and healers that I probably would never have access to in LA, right? Just never have the inclination to be able to connect all those people together, but also the people in the room, like who's there, who else is a person that's like so up to wellness and vitality in their life that they're willing to spend three days of their world in this event. Like that's the kind of person that I want to meet and connect with and be friends with, you know? So it's not just about the result you get. It's just, it's more about the community you tap into and the people that you draw towards yourself. That's a whole nother level of vitality. It will change how you think and you'll come back to your world and you'll go, whoa, that relationship doesn't work for me anymore. I'm at a different level. As, as Carolyn Mize says, it's the level is just like another floor in a building. It's yeah. not that you are better than people. It's just another floor. And when you move up in a level, you see things differently from a different view. Right. And actually, I'm so glad that you brought that up because yeah. one of the another reason why I decided to do this event um, is because I've got a pretty strong podcast following on one on several of my channels, but on one in particular. And in that particular show, Spirit, Purpose, and Energy, uh, people were talking about this kind of stuff. And and again, I want to, and we're in this digital world where I'm so glad to have people who listen to my show and listen to your show, and we can do this, and we can connect with people video and live on Facebook, and it's awesome. And then what happens when we move away from the computer, we take the earbuds out of our ears, right? Yeah. So we feel this sort of loneliness. It's like, why are we addicted to our technology? Because we see it as, this is my connection. And I want people to understand and feel a community. And you have a community, you haven't met them yet. So I'm creating this event because I want these people to create a live community where yes, maybe you're not gonna see each other, but once a year, or if I hopefully do this event again. See, I don't even know if I'm gonna do it again. I would like to do it again potentially, but we'll see how it goes. So please, if you're interested, come to the event because I'm not sure if I'm doing it again. Yeah, but that's something, yeah. So just be clear, this is the first event she's done like this. And what I mean, the reason I'm saying that is because this is the first time these kinds of people have come together and the potential of them coming together again, we're not sure yet, you know? And so I would say just for that alone, it really is truly a one-time event. You know, it's not like, well, next year we'll do the same thing. No, no, no. We don't know. We don't know. This is just I don't know. a once time thing, you know? Yeah. So it's like that. You just have to really get that too. 
So the community, you know, people, I've heard feedback from people who listen to my podcast. Oh my God, I'm so glad I found your show. I feel like such an ugly duckling, like a black sheep because I don't, people are like who I'm around. They don't talk like this and I'm interested in these things, but nobody else is interested in these things. Okay, everybody, I'm bringing all together the people who are interested in these things. Come meet your tribe. Come get to know them, make a connection. And then we're going to keep ourselves together at least virtually, but there'll be a, a stronger personal connection and, and it's going to fulfill and enrich your life on levels that you, you're yearning for. I know you're yearning for it because we all are. That's why half of us are addicted to our technology because we're looking yeah. for that connection. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm coming for that. <laughs> I'm more like, okay, all these people, my people, <laughs> my people, what's up, my tribe. <laughs> you know, because in everyday life, you don't walk around going, hey, you want to talk about like health and well-being and chakras? You know, it's a, it's a whatever. So I, I, you know, we, it's like attracts like. So I just want to repeat a little bit about what this event is about. It's in LA, right at the beginning of 2018. Start your world off right. Start your 2018 off right. Here's the URL, heatherhavenwood.com forward slash JJ. Here is a discount. Hello, discount. Okay, discount. Here it is. Ready? 150FF, all caps, 150FF, which is 15% off for the live version in LA, January 12th, 13th, and 14th in Amazing LA. So this event is once in a lifetime. This might, I don't know, might happen again, might not, I don't know. But like, even if she does the event next year, it's not gonna be the same people. It's not gonna be the same speakers. It's not, it's just not. It might be something different, I don't know. But this is a once time deal. It's just like,